Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 1, Onigakushi. Let's jump back into it. It's a gas stove, so controlling the heat is easy. All that's left is to let it stew a bit. The delicious smell of curry began wafting upwards. The pot gifted to me by my two underclassmen certainly drew some double takes. Rainy even looked surprised when she came to take a look, so it must be pretty good. Kei-chan, you're pretty good! It looks like this will be a good match right to the bitter end. Reina wants to eat Kei-chan's curry. Curry! Reina's curry and Mion's curry too. Everybody is a worthy opponent. I've done my very best, but I'm not sure of the outcome. Kei-chi-san, Rika's calling you. Go see what she wants. What? Rika-chan's calling me? What could it be? Well, whatever. While I'm at it, I can gather some intelligence on the enemy. <laughs> Rika Chan was doodling on the ground in front of the pot. Because all that's left to do is all that's left to let all that's left is to let it stew. Even then, it's good to know that she doesn't leave the stove unattended. Hey Rika Chan, how's yours doing? It's Mr. Curry! Huh? Rika Chan was doodling something strange and introduced as Mr. Curry. Mr. Curry is amazing. He shoots beams from his eyes. Pew pew. <laughs> Apparently, Mr. Curry shoots beam beams from his eyes. Drawing a beam with a stick, she etched a line towards my feet. Does this mean I've been shot with a laser? Whoa! Barrier! Beam reflect! I took another stick in my hand and reflected this, the beam, striking Mr. Curry. Mr. Can sh Mr. Curry can shoot missiles from his stomach. Pew! How? Maya bar is super electromagnetic barrier and retaliatory beam. Mr. Curry absorbs, absorbs the beam and fires his impulse wave cannon. Rika Chen and I scratched at the ground, thoroughly engrossing in our doodle war. Wait a moment. Hey, Rika Chen, you called me over here for a reason, right? Yes, I called you. But I've already fulfilled my purpose. Uh oh. Yeah. At that moment, a chill ran up my spine. Already fulfilled her purpose. They, they got me! Headed back to my pot, standing there, just as I feared, was Satoko. With no questions asked, I drop kicked the back of her head. <laughs> what, what, what do you think you're doing? You know better than to do that to a lady's head. Who cares about that? Satoko, did you make something in with my cur- How impertinent. I haven't fallen that far. Despite what you may think, I'm a fair person, you know. Then what's this uncomprehensible line of lady of ladles and plates? Leaving them all in these unstable positions. If they fall over, what will you do? At that moment, a gentle breeze blew by, knocking over a ladle that was stood up on its end. The ladle-like domino fell over and knocked over the next cooking utensil in a row. What? 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 Clank, clank, thud, thud. This is art. Come to think of it, Domino World record challenges were quite the rage on television a while back. K Kei chan, the frying pan. I didn't even have time to react. The chain reaction knocked over a cutting board, then the frying pan. The next after that was my pot. Crash. The frying pan struck my pot full force, tipping it over. The contents cruelly spilled out, and now my masterpiece was being sampled by the schoolyard. I stared, dumbfounded. It was such a beautiful and elaborate mousetrap that, for a moment, I lost touch with reality. Oh my, oh my, this is a catastrophe! I didn't do anything, you hear me? Oh ho ho ho! At, that ver at the very last moment, I had let my guard down. I ignored the culinary incompetence of Toko for far too long. Even if she couldn't cook, Sotoko still had this method of fighting back. Just then, Reina, who had been sampling her own pot, let out a scream. Whoa, whoa what? Reina, Reina's curry is salty? Salty? Was Reina also sabotaged? Then what about Mion? My rice is salty! I've been had! Oh ho ho ho! With this, all the obstacles in my way have been taken care of before the fight even begins. Ha! <laughs> All that effort wasted. So sad, so sad. So very, very sad. 
Rinka-chan and Satoko rub my dumbfounded head to their heart's content. Pushing the desks together, it was about time for the meals to be judged. The delicious odor of curry spread throughout the courtyard. The members of the forestry service to whom we owe gratitude for their daily work were guided to their seats. The principal gave a bit of a ceremonial introduction. Next, the teacher expressed her desire for them to judge the curry contest. The men from the forestry service seemed to like that kind of thing and gave their enthusiastic approval. Well then, is everybody finished? We'll now have all the judges sample your, sample your cooking. Everybody in the class brought up their painstakingly made curry and arranged them on the desk. The only club members who managed a decent result were Rika-chan's group. Knowing full well it was a failure, Raina plated her curry for the judges. She already knew she was going to get a low score. But at least she was still able to serve hers. Both Mion's and my curry were completely obliterated, and we couldn't even line them up on the table. The judges started from the curry made by the lower grades. They had a lively discussion praising the food. Finally, it was our curry's turn. Next up is Ryugu Kun's curry. Yes, this looks quite appetizing. The principal cheerfully shoveled a spoonful of Reina's salty curry into his mouth. Of course, his expression immediately changed. Oh my, what happened, Ryugu san? It seemed so delicious when you were cooking it. Chi sensei must have had some expectations, judging from her disappointment. How? Uh, I'm sorry. I might have added a bag of salt by accident. The rest of the judges grimaced after they each had a bite. I feel sorry for them. Failure is but the seasoning for success. I'm looking forward to next time. Do your best! Saying that, the principal devoured the rest of the over-salted curry in one go. Truly a man amongst men. Reyna was down and out. Her offensive capabilities were something else, but she was defeated due to her weak defense. Well then, please savor our curry next. I see that Farood San's group put a lot of effort into their curry. Let's see here. Hmm. It's simple, but very nicely done. There was also the incident with Reyna's salted curry right before this, so the judge's assessment was extraordinarily high. Maybe not just extraordinary, but perhaps today's forerunner? The judges began a heated debate. One of those judges let out a sigh as he removed a chunk of carrot with his spoon. Yeah, this kid's curry isn't half bad. But I don't like carrots, you see? Personally, I think that carrots are a staple of curry. But I guess to each their own. However, seeing that, Rika-chan read the nameplate on the chest of his coveralls and began to speak. That's no good, Kyuji. You have to eat your carrots. <laughs> what is she saying all of a sudden? Everybody turned to Rika-chan with a stunned look. But what Rika-chan just did was super effective. The carrot-hating judge began stuffing his face with curry while tears streamed down his face. Kyoji, there are seconds if you want them. <laughs> Sub, mommy! While crying like that, he continued to shovel curry into his mouth. That's right, Rika-chan's curry was by no means simple. No, that curry had the taste of a mother's cooking. With the carrot-hating judge out of the picture, Rika-chan's assessment was unanimous. Oh ho ho! Nobody can stand up to Rika's curry. Sotoko let off a shrill laugh as she declared victory, but at that moment... Don't be fooled, my esteemed judges. Don't be deceived into thinking that this meager slop is the taste only a mother can provide. What you people actually wanted to eat was this kind of curry, wasn't it? Ooh! All of a sudden, it is all, in all its perfect glory, Mion's curry. Not only the judges, but the teacher, the underclassmen, and of course myself, could only gasp in admiration. Hamburg steak with a demi-glaze sauce and a fresh salad. It's a set! It wouldn't be stretching to say that this was a full course meal. It's perfectly, it's perfect, perfectly made. Uh, amazing, amazing! Michan, you're amazing! Michan, you're amazing! Satoko was also shocked. Even Reika-chan couldn't hide her surprise. It seems the victor was decided without even needing a taste. Of course, the hamburger was hand-kneaded. The salad also had a home-style dressing, but of professional quality. And the curry, not even a micron of grit. This is sublime. Truly a taste to savor Sonozaki-san. 
This curry is no doubt a living testimony to 6,000 years of Indian knowledge and beautiful harmony with Japanese cuisine. I'm elated. This deserves full marks. I'm giving it 100 points. Aw, oh, you're welcome. I'm just trying to set an example as class representative, Mion bowed politely, and then winked at us with a smirk on her face. I admit defeat. The, there's no way this is happening. I'm certain I sabotaged that pot of rice. That's right. So Toko had dumped salt into Mion's rice cooker, which should have ruined it. At that moment, it hit me. I spun back towards my own canister. Th that's why! At some point, my cook canister had been opened, its contents completely emptied. Damn you, Mion! You used my rice! That's no fair! Hand over half of your curry! Mion clucked her tongue and waved her finger at me as a smirk washed over her face. Whoa there, Kei-chan! You're not taking this seriously enough! You gave up at the last moment! I didn't. That's the difference between us. As soon as you give up, it's all over. God, I couldn't even properly voice my shame. Michan, I feel sorry for Keiichi kun. Just give him at least a little. It's fine, it's fine. This is a lesson. Keiichan just learned that you shouldn't give up on the contest until it's over, right? It loathes me to say it, but Mion is right. To give up so quickly on the match was my own folly. For Mion to have brought that to my attention, I should actually be thankful to her. Well then, did that mean, even in this situation, I shouldn't give up? My curry was overturned while it was still in the pot, and I don't even have any rice left. How in the blazes am I not supposed to lose hope in this situation? Ma, my Abarasan! Tomita-kun and Okumara-kun suddenly appeared. Damn it! Even though my protégés had tried so hard, I wasn't able to meet their expectations. It, it was an accident. There was nothing you could do. Both of them were dejected. Gah, I couldn't accept defeat so easily. I was their senior. What would I be if I didn't pick up the broken pieces of the dream I had shown them? I just learned it from Mion just now, didn't I? Don't throw away the contest. Not until the last moment. Think, Keiichi Mayabara, think. Not about how to make more curry, about how to win the match. Hmm. Ah! I had an idea. I didn't think it could turn the tables, but it was better than nothing. Tomita-kun, come and wash your hands. Help me out. Okumara-kun, there's something I want you to find. Okay, gotcha. Both of them dispersed after receiving these instructions. Oh? How is Kei-chan gonna flounder about at the end? Why don't you show me? Nobody likes a stubborn fool, you know. Shut up. Just sit, th just, just, sit there. just sit there and watch the last card I have to play. First off, Mion, I'll be taking some of your rice. I won't let you say no. I don't really care. It's salty after all. It's okay if Reyna helps too, right? Keiichi Kun is in trouble now. Hearing you say that is very reassuring. Well then, Reyna, go make some tea. How? He doesn't trust me. Next, Satoko. Also, Rika-chan. I challenge you to a side bet. What? Well, what did you say? We'll listen to your request. This was my duty to my two protégés who shed blood, sweat, and tears for my sake. Sotoko, Rika-chan, if I receive a perfect score, I'll be taking the curry. Nothing for you to eat! Y you need to know when to stop joking around. I'll be giving a big no to that. No, it's alright, Sotoko. Take him up on it. Firmly patting the top of Sotoko's head, Mion said the, those words with all the gravitas of a club president. You handicapped him this much, didn't you? There's no way you can make up for that. So meet him head on. No matter how hard he struggles, he's not going to make a comeback. Right? Grr. That may be true, but... I don't mind. Keiichi. Keiichi, go for it. Yay! Alright, let's see what I can do. The judges seemingly growing tired of sampling the various curries were debating each curry. Or each entry. From what little I overheard, it seemed that Mion's impending victory was not in question. By the way, what happened to Maya Barakun's curry? I still haven't tried it yet. Yeah. 
the pot with my curry in it fell over. Hmm. Is that so? That's a real shame. I may have lost my curry, but that doesn't mean I've lost this contest. I'll have everybody, everybody singing my praises. My combative posturing had drawn the attention of all the judges. First of all, just be quiet and eat these, please. I'll listen to your complaints after that. This is my cooking! M my Abarakun, that's... Hmm. Onigiri, huh? The judges smiled wryly at the sample fare that was quite in contrast to the preceding bravado. Raina poured tea in the cup she had brought over from the break room. He he's making a mockery of this. There, look! There's not even filling. It's nothing more than salted onigiri. This isn't even worthy of being called a contest anymore. It's true, the amount of salt might be a little much, but... Raina's expression told me she thought this was a great idea. But it might still not be enough to win the match. My Abara-san, is this really enough to make a comeback? Gentlemen, you did well. It's alright. Just watch. The judges were chewing with their mouths full and sipping at the tea. Nobody was singing praises or awestruck. They were just quietly chowing down. It seems that Keichan has learned how to use some rather underhanded tricks. This might be difficult. Yeah, that's right. Reina understands that now, too. Wha what do you mean? Why is everybody just quietly eating that much? You see, Satoko-chan, that's because the judges are actually tired of eating curry. <laughs> Because they were judges, they had to sample each and every offering. And because they were from small children, because they were made... Woo, no, hold on. Because they were made to show their appreciation, they couldn't ju eat just a little bit of each. Sometimes a man values the amount more than the taste. At those times, rather than rich, mind-blowing flavor, they crave simplicity. They couldn't say it out loud, but this was the tastiest thing they'd had today. I confirm that by looking at their eyes as the judges smiled wryly. I'll praise your efforts, but today's contest was about curry. I'm not sure we can give a score to this. The teacher and the principal had folded their arms while they pondered the situation. My underlings, seeing that, saw the small glimmer of hope fade away and grew dejected. Ah, was this little surprise just not enough? Don't give up, Keijan, Myung whispered quietly. That's right. If I didn't push here... No. I'll have you give it a score. If you think that curry and onigiri are really that different, you're sorely mistaken. Huh? Maya Barakun, what are you saying? How are they the same? The principal stopped the teacher. It looked like he was giving me one final chance. The judges, having eaten their fill, quietly waited for my statement. In its homeland of India, curry is usually eaten with a type of bread called naan, isn't it? Therefore, you could say that this cuisine we call curry rice is something that we have adopted and modified. Just as the teacher had said at the beginning, it's a fusion of Indian and Japanese cuisine. I know what you're trying to say, Mayabaraka, but what does that have to do with onigiri? It's actually very simple. Both curry and onigiri are things made up to let you enjoy eating rice. Rice was introduced to Japan from ancient China. Our agriculture for forebears watered the fields fighting the elements, disease, and pests to grow and raise our rice-centric culture. Yes, the Japanese people have formulated a plethora of dishes, but those were nothing more than attempts to find, find ways to enjoy eating rice. In other words, curry and onigiri are both the result of rice culture. It was scattered at first, but slowly grew into a steady roar. It was a thunderous applause that praised me. Enough with the nonsense already. I won't accept this. The teacher were only judging curry, you know. This is out of the question. It obviously deserves zero points. M Miss Keiichi kun did his best. Could you please acknowledge that? Today's class was supposed to be about curry. What should we do? Mion, stifling her laughter, stepped forward. There's a story about how when a Michelin three-star chef from France came to Japan, the people from the hotel he was staying at had a whole bunch of ingredients from France imported. But the chef didn't even give them a second glance. I wonder why that was. They were ingredients from his homeland. The chef went to a local fish market and made a dish from fresh, fresh fish caught in Japan. 
The culture of food isn't bound by predetermined rules. It's culture. If you come to Japan, you meld with Japanese culture and make something new. That's how curry and onigiri are the same. M Mion. She was providing fire support. I had to be grateful. The judges were somehow moved by this complicated yet baseless trivia. A stern look washed over the teacher's face as she refolded her arms. Maya Barakun, your pot of curry was flipped over, wasn't it? Even though I said at the beginning to be careful. Uh, I'm sorry, but as Maya Barakun and Sonozaki-san said, there are no boundaries in cuisine. If it's something that can amaze people, then it's not something that should be discriminated against just because of the form. Then, then... For spilling your pot, minus 20 points. But just for today. For not giving up and doing your best, plus 20 points. I'll give you 100 points. My my bar son, we did it! My underclassman leapt at me. A perfect score. We did it, we did it! The curry was split and our rice was taken. Uh, the curry was spilt and our rice was taken, but we made a comeback. In the end, Rika Chan's curry also received full marks, so everybody but Reina had a perfect score. Since this contest was outside the scope of regular club activities, there wasn't any particular penalty game. Reina breathed a sigh of relief. Now then, as promised, Sotoko, Rika Chan, I'll be taking your curry. But, but, but that means we won't have any lunch. Wah! Sotoko stomped angrily at the ground in frustration, but the price of defeat was absolute is what I wanted to say, but I'll show you some mercy. You can eat half. Thank you, Keiichi. My two protégés peered over from the sidelines, tears of joy streaming from their faces. We exchanged glances that would only be understood amongst men. W we did it, mayabara san Ah, and this is all thanks to you. We flash each other a thumbs up. Now, I just have to give these to my pupils. I've gotten pretty hungry myself. I guess I'll have one of my onigiri. What? Huh? There was no trace of my onigiri. The ones I had set aside for myself included. As I peered around searching for them, the principal clapped a hand on my shoulder. Gahahaha. <laughs> when I was listening to that speech you gave, the rice I was chewing grew even more delicious. Gahahaha. <laughs> um, could it be that you also ate my share? <laughs> the principal simply laughed without answering. So seriously? My eyes half brimming with tears and my stomach rumbling. I was called over by the teacher. Maya Barakun, because of the circumstances, I had to give you a perfect score. But you understand, right? Huh? Understand what? There was an odd glint in the teacher's eye. If I describe it, it was curry-colored. Like a pot of stewing curry, her eyes whirled around in a spiral. A chill washed over me. The teacher clutched me by the shoulders and drew me in closer until our noses were almost touching. Curry is this world's most respected and sacred of dishes. I will absolutely not allow it to be put in the same category as onigiri, you hear me? Curry was created in ancient India, one of the four great river valley civilizations that was raved about during the reign of King Ashoka in Kapilavastu for the birth of the Shayaka at the International Food Expo, Michelin twirly twirly, even the Eiffel Tower was picked and simmering curry turmeric, whether you are asleep or awake, curry, 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 curry. <laughs> hey, Keiichi-san, what are you stumbling about around for? Cleaning up is part of, your, a part of cooking, too. Keiichi-kun, your eyes are all curried. Why is that? Why? Curry, curry, curry. <laughs> Yikes, she got him, huh? It's okay, he'll be back to normal by tomorrow. Probably. It wasn't that long before hunger brought me back to my senses. He could ask you when they cry. In the end, all the onigiri was eaten by the principal, so I had to make do without lunch. Skipping lunch, 
I never knew the afternoon could be so long and painful. A feeling other than drowsiness made me space out. Uh, are you alright, Keiichi-kun? That's why I said you shouldn't eat Raina's curry. As if I could eat this curry with enough salt in it to make my blood pressure rise just by looking, looking at it. Is what I said when I initially refused. I could only regret it. The hunger. The stomach ache. Well, well, well. You did a good job making it through. Your absolutely hopeless situation, that is. Keichan, you're pretty strong when you're cornered, eh? I don't need any compliments right now. I need food. There's something for you to eat at home, right? We don't keep snacks lying around at home. And I'm out of cup noodles right now. Ah ha ha ha. Since you're enduring that hunger so much right now, I'm sure tonight's dinner will be really tasty. I had absolutely no intention of laughing along. Well then, I'll take my leave. I have my part-time job again today. <sighs> it's really rough when you're not used to the work. Ah, uh, the job at the Angel Mort family restaurant, huh? That uniform was somewhat stimulating. How? Being a waitress really is hard work. Eh, Mi-chan is working as a waitress. Really? Really? What kind of place is it? How? No, no, I'm right. I'm working at that toy store <laughs> from the other day. Yeah, okay, so that is her. Interesting. Xi'an is the waitress. Ah, my bad. I completely forgot that was how it ended up being. Ah, I'm sorry. You guys look so similar. I mixed you up. Keiichi-kun, who's Xi'an? Raina asked the obvious question. Ah, um, Mion's younger twin sister. She got a really different personality, but she's a dead ringer for Mion. That's right. We look similar, but our personalities are completely different. I'm very kind and thoughtful, but Xion has a cold and scary personality. I think that when you guys were born, Xion got all the feminine aspects. Unlike Mion, she's a cute, cheerful girl. Kakechi chan Rainy interjected as her eyes darted back and forth from our exchange. Hmm? Is that true? Raina's never met her. Michan, did you ever tell me you had a younger sister? Xion's existence was already being exposed as a cover-up. Uh, I couldn't help Mion out here. I could only have her end the charade. Oh yeah, I still haven't introduced you introduced her to you, Reina. Ahaha, my younger sister's name is Xion. I don't know. I didn't ask. I never met her when I went to Michan's house. Um, yeah, yeah, that! You know, I'm the only one that lives with Granny. Xion lives at the family home in Okinimi Okinomiya. Well, we're not that close, so yeah, she doesn't come here too often. Hmm? Reina's face indicated that she wasn't sure if she was convinced. She was, she was usually a bit of an airhead. But she was unusually sharp when it came to these kinds of things. Um, well, it's not a lie. Please believe me. As she said, yeah, I believe you. A smile suddenly blossomed on Reyna's face. Reyna wants to meet her. I'll go and see her sometime. What store is she working at? What store? Um, uh, uh, that is... Uh, she's gotten more, even more tangled in her little web. I could tell that Mion was getting increasingly frantic. I wanted to help her out but it was hard for an outsider to butt in on family issues. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. I have to get to work. Later. Reina Ke uh, Keichan, see you tomorrow. Unilaterally ending the conversation, Mion headed home. No matter how you looked at it, she was running away. We'll just label this one as an emergency escape. Michan was kind of cute. I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> Reina giggled in amusement. I wonder when dinner is. Would lying down be the best way to conserve energy? I sprawled in the entry without even taking off my shoes. Ah, I was losing the last vestige of my consciousness. As I was losing, uh, as I was losing the last vestige of my vestiges of my consciousness, the doorbell rang. It seemed I had a guest. Come on in. It's open. I directed my listless voice to the door. <laughs> good afternoon, huh? Keichan, what are you doing? 
It seemed like guest was Beon, or rather, Shion. She, she, she seemed shocked when she saw me sprawled out on the entryway. Is that Shion? Wait, why? I thought that Shion's existence was an illusion that was limited to when Mion was at the restaurant. That's why I never even considered that Shion would appear here. I heard from my sister. Because of club activities today, you weren't able to eat lunch, right? Yeah, it was a lot of trouble. So Toko spilled my pot and you stole my rice. But, but I'm Shion. She grew red and began to mope. That's right, she was the younger twin right now. Sorry, sorry. What's up? Did you bring something for me to eat? Oh my! It's somehow disappointing that you hit the nail right on the head, but here. With a disappointed smile, Xion held out the small bento box she had hidden behind her back. Huh? You, you really brought me something to eat? Thanks! There was still some of the ground beef left over from what my sister brought to school. I knew it was going to be the right... I knew it was going to be right before dinner, but I wondered if you'd want it. Am I bothering you? Not even a bit. I'm really happy. Can I really eat this? Sneaking a look inside the box to say that... Uh, to say that she just put some of the leftover inside would have been a lie. There was an elegant meal stuffed inside. I is it really okay? And with that, that's where I'm going to end this episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!